Hey YouTube, so it's a sunny day here in Guernsey and uh, I'm doing what every producer does, spend a sunny day in the studio. So um, I want to get more active on YouTube this year so I'm just going to do some random videos like this and more tutorials and just general stuff. So um, what I thought I'd do today is give you a little tour of my studio um, which I share with my dad. Um, because he's a photographer and does a lot of printing and, uh, well, editing and all sorts of stuff in here. So I just want to show you the sort of stuff that I use to make music and maybe give you a few tips as well. Um, so my studio is actually in my parents' back garden. Um, yeah, not ideal, uh, but it's just a place where I can store this stuff because at the moment my house isn't really... Yeah, it's not really appropriate to have all this stuff in uh, with neighbours and stuff. But hopefully I'm going to build a studio in my own back garden um, and try and like uh, acoustically treat it as well. So that'd be really cool. But anyway, I'm going to show you what I've got in my studio at the. Okay, so I'm going to try and stop waffling and just show you what's in the studio. So I've got my um, iMac 5K, 5K, 4K. It's a few years old, uh, it's really powerful, got like 32 gig RAM, a uh, nice processor so it can handle like over 100 channels going um, at once in Ableton, which is really, really useful. Uh, next up, I've got this MIDI keyboard, which to be honest with you, isn't actually plugged in, but I've probably had it for over 10 years when I was making or messing around on GarageBand, um, but I just have it in here to um, just because it's a place for it to be. Next up, I've got my trusty speakers, uh, the Focals. I absolutely love these speakers. I've had them for just over a year, so I've gotten used to how they sound in here. Um, so even though I'm not like, or this studio is not super acoustically treated, as it's literally just some of these paddings around and foam and stuff, um, I'm used to how the way it, it um, sounds. So, you know, as long as you're referencing, then it's all good. Uh, so yeah, obviously got two speakers there. I've got my UAD, which my amazing girlfriend bought me for Christmas uh, last year. Um, so I've got a few plugins on there because they had like this massive uh, Christmas sale, which was awesome. I have got a USB hub, which has got my trusty Nexus license um, key there. The iLock, uh, which at the moment, I'm only really using it for the um, Oxford Inflator, which is a super secret, awesome plugin for making your stuff sound super loud and crisp. Um, I've got my headphones. Um, God, I can't remember what make these are. It doesn't even say. Uh, well, that's not a very good uh, studi uh, studio at all, if I can't say what they're called. But these um, headphones are used by a lot of people in the industry, and they're super crisp. So I don't tend to produce on these. I tend to just check my mix and everything once I've, I've finished um, a track. So I mix on both uh, monitors and headphones, and then I check my mix in the car and um, and the club, and then go back change you know make a few changes before sending it to labels and DJs and stuff um, I've also got the Apogee Duet sound card um, had this for maybe three years now and when I upgraded from just a I think I was using my Pioneer mixer um, before I sold it to the club yeah the sound card is awesome and it just really um, gets your speakers and sounds to sounding to the next level. You can just hear so much more with it. Then I've got a KRK 10 inch sub, which just really, to be able to mix low end properly, um, I would say you either need a sub or a sub pack. Um, I don't have a sub pack myself. I'm really, really tempted to try it at um, my ADE or somewhere where you can try out gear before buying one. It's something definitely on my wish list just to reference a bit more. I've got a Virus TI. Um, I've had that for a few years now, so it's it's a hardware synth. Sorry if the video cut out there. Um, my phone actually ran out of recording space, but 
it's all sorted now. So yeah, this is a hardware synth um, typically used for making huge super saw sounds. Um, a lot of the Nexus patches um, actually come from the Nexus, uh, come from the Virus Ti. I'm told, so that's good because the Nexus patches sound awesome. Um, yeah, I haven't used this in a few months, but I do like to sometimes create my super saws on a Virus Ti because there's just I don't know, it's got that character, that crisp. Um, which also combined with some UAD plugins, um, you can just get that that sound that isn't really possible through digital synthesizers. Uh, next, I've got um, Notepad, which if I just come up with an idea or a list of things that I need to do in in a mix or just in a track in general, I just quickly write them down there so I don't forget. It's definitely something I would recommend everyone has in their studio. Um, phone charger yeah um yeah i think that's pretty much about it. oh one last thing if i mentioned it already is i have a rode microphone so when i'm recording like a a tutorial or a voiceover for something um i just use a rode microphone because the quality is just incredible especially if you run it through like a compressor a ds -er, um an eq just add some crisp in the high end it just sounds really awesome Last but not least, I have some motivational like quotes and stuff, which yeah, it's a uh, it's a bit cheesy. But sometimes when you're having a bad day or you can't come up with some ideas or you don't feel like it's going well, then I just like to look at these. Um, actually, I also have an LED thing like the whole spaceship studio that everybody seems to have so yeah at the moment it's on blue it's uh yeah you can just change colors and stuff i think it costs about like 25 quid so yeah it's um it's nice in the evening where you can create like a bit of like mood atmosphere i can actually switch it off uh one last thing actually i have like a an inspirational photo um, of the first like live, well not live, but um, DJ show that I ever went to. That was Hardwell Manchester 2014, and yeah, I got it as a, a birthday present a couple of months later. And I just like to have this here. Um, I don't know, it just helps me think when I'm producing a track. Um, almost thinks helps me think back to that night and think, would I have danced to this song or jumped to this song? If I was there that night and I, the, the DJ played this song that I'm making, so um, and the answer, if the answer is no, then you just try a different idea. So it just helps to get some perspective of, of the big picture of I'm making dance music for people to jump around and, and lose control. That kind of thing. So um, that's pretty much it. That's my studio um, at the moment been here for a few years so I'm used to how it sounds which is why I can get relatively clean-ish mixes that sound okay on other systems but I always reference in the car in the club in my uh, lounge like surround sound system as well um, but yeah if you guys like this kind of video um, be sure to subscribe I'm going to try and do more like in real life videos with my ugly mug and stuff um, yeah, uh, Jesus, I've been chatting for far too long. My computer's decided to go to sleep. So I will see you guys in the next video. The thing that I forgot to mention, and it's a studio essential, is a really comfy chair. Because if you're making music for like more than a few hours at a time, you just need a chair that's awesome.